guys, here's a statistical riddle for you, and you might want to get your pen and paper out, because I'm about to throw a number of numbers your way. What do 20 to 40 percent of women ages 15 to 44 have in common? Probably a lot of things. The answer I'm looking for, though, is douching. And I think we can all agree that that's a lot of douche. <laughs> Now before we get into why women douche today, let's go back in history to the olden days of douching in the 1920s and 1950s when women were not douching to keep their vaginas smelling like ocean breezes, spring meadows, baby powder. Douching was first used by women as the primary form of birth control before the birth control pill existed. Women were not able to go to the drugstore and pick up something like a disposable douche. They had to make do with what they had in the house. Lysol. Lysol's main competitor at the time, Zonite. Coca-Cola classic. It was before Diet Coke. Water. Vinegar. Homemade douche recipes that moms might pass down to their daughters once they came of age and had that special talk that went something like this. Hey honey. Yeah mom. Do you douche? Do I what? Douche. Here's a recipe. Being a girl's the best. The idea with these early douches, which were incredibly caustic and certainly not good for the vaginal canal at all, was that they would clean out any remaining sperm, thus not allowing women to get pregnant. Thankfully though, for vaginas everywhere, in 1972 the FDA approved the birth control pill for all women. The emphasis on douching shifted away from birth control, even though that is still around today, to more of a deodorizing thing because how terrifying would it be for uh, our genitals, which have a smell, to actually smell like they should smell. And so today, as I said at the beginning of this video, 20 to 40 percent of women are still douching. But listen, just because douching is still around and just because a lot of people still do it does not mean that it is a good thing to do. The vagina has been described as a self-cleaning oven. It takes care of its own messes, y'all. If we're talking about douching today, what is inside of a douche? Well, we have purified water, octanoxyl 9, citric acid, ooh, sodium benzoate, disodium EDTA, and fragrance. Would you drink that? You want your vagina to drink it? I don't think so. Let's see what's inside this douche because I've been curious. I've never bought a douche before. It is a little bit nerve wracking to buy one. There are instructions here. When to douche, after your menstrual period, after using contraceptive jellies and creams, and to clear out vaginal secretions. What do we have? Oh, oh, I can smell the ocean breeze from here. I feel a little bit PG-13 showing this on camera. It's not that it smells bad, it just smells so strongly and that is a lot of liquid. This is a douche bag and it smells of an ocean breeze. Remove overwrap, done it. Hold the cap of the bottle in one hand and the nozzle in the other hand. Pull the nozzle upward, it will click when engaged correctly. The douche is not ready for use until it clicks. Gently insert nozzle into your vagina, no more than three inches, and slowly squeeze the bottle until the liquid is dispensed. Douching solution should flow freely out of the vagina. Use while sitting in the toilet, in the tub, or while standing in the shower. Great time for someone to come to the door. Now the three main reasons why women douche are all bogus. To clean out the vagina, prevent pregnancy, prevent the spread of STIs and STDs. Guess what folks? Douching actually does none of that. It does not protect you from STIs or STDs. It does not prevent pregnancy. There was one study which found that douching can reduce your risk of pregnancy by 30%. Horrible odds! And the whole thing about cleaning the vagina is total and complete false marketing because the vagina is like its own ecosystem, okay? It is a very pH balanced place in there. Healthy bacteria that fight off bad bacteria. And if you put something in there that is not supposed to go in there, like this, it can throw that balance off. That is not to say that if you are experiencing some kind of odor in the vagina that you don't need to go to the doctor because you might have something like bacterial vaginosis going on or an STD or an STI, but most of the time, your vagina will clean itself out. In terms of the whole thing about cleaning out menstrual fluids, cleaning out vaginal secretions, all of that, take a shower, drink lots of water, be healthy. Douching increases your risk 
of developing vaginal infections. So you really, 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 really don't want to be part of that 20 to 40 percent. Be part of the 60 percent. Let's make the 60 percent the 100 percent. Yes, the female body has certain smells, just like the male body. Everyone's afraid of the vagina. Don't be afraid of your vagina. If something's funky, go to the doctor. Don't go to the douche. And guys, I hope this has answered all of your questions about douching. And I don't mean to get so worked up about douching, but let's take care of our bodies. You know what the vagina is not supposed to smell like? Whatever is inside of this. Funeral home potpourri. Do you want your underpants to smell like a casket? I didn't think so.